Peppermint mochas are too tasty. Hello everyone, good morning, welcome to the vlog. I have some bad news. Maybe it's good news to you, I don't know. Unfortunately, I woke up today, looked out the window, and we are snowed in. There was a huge snowstorm the night before, and I saw it happen, and I got the weather advisory. There was an advisory and it was like, oh, you're gonna get 24 inches of snow, which for some reason in my head, I kept thinking meant 24 feet of snow. So I was like, but there are two feet of snow outside. So today I am not leaving my room at all, which isn't that new for me, to be honest. We are stuck inside for a long, long time. I ran out to get some Starbucks. It was an impossible journey. I went out and got this right before the snow got really, really bad. So I got their red velvet loaf, which has been my new favorite thing to get there. And I also got a peppermint mocha and that's gonna be my meal for now. Luckily, I am going home this weekend. So I am eating all the food in my fridge, which I've been needing to do. So I'm gonna get rid of some long overdue groceries. We are indoors today. So we are going to do some work. My final is due this Friday. So I'm just gonna get everything I can done. I have a bunch of work that I need to catch up on in class because I have not been finishing my assignments because we just get like these projects to do in class and then we just have to finish them whenever so there's not really a set deadline of when it's all due but like I said it snowed in and oh my god oh my god that person's car is stuck outside in the snow um I've also been hearing sirens all day because I think they're slowly trying to clear out the streets But the snow is really, really bad right now. I've actually never seen it snow like this here. It snows a lot in Rhode Island and it sticks for a long, long time, but usually it's like just a couple inches, but we really got a storm this time. So you guys know my box of items that I've been using for my class. I have these little envelopes in there. I really need to make more of these because my final is gonna be a set of stationery. And then I'm gonna paint on these, which I will probably do in the next video. I need to make more of these. I need to finish my homework, which I think is the first thing I wanna try to do because we learned how to make a box recently and I never finished it. And we also made a book, but mine is falling apart. But I know how to make books with spines. So it's really infuriating actually that it is falling apart because like I literally know what I'm doing. And I really like this class because I do know what I'm doing. So we're gonna try to fix all these things today, which I guess it's a good day to do because we're just stuck inside the entire time. So that is the plans for today. So yeah, I just want to get some of this homework done. So we're gonna try to do that first right now. And then I will just see where the day takes me. And I guess I'll just get as much stuff as I can done today because not like I can do anything else because we're snowed in, so. Alrighty, so it's officially time to fix this strawberry book. I'm actually very excited and kind of scared because I don't know why I didn't film any of it, but if you guys can tell by the slightest bit, these gutters are way too short, which is the space in between these boards at the spine. And so I'm gonna separate them and try to fix this situation because I really love this strawberry paper. I didn't want it to go to waste and I really wanted to make a book that worked because deep down I know how to make books, so I don't know what went wrong here. I guess I didn't leave enough space. I made it too tight so the paper started to tear and because I wrapped it in paper it made the situation even worse because it's so weak to begin with. I'm cutting out a little spine piece. I found this beautiful chartreuse green paper and it works surprisingly well and then I also discovered mole recently which is this little webby thing. My professor had it in class and I was like what the heck is that but apparently it helps stabilize things which is amazing. I didn't know that was a thing. So I'm cutting down this green paper to get it the right size for the spine. Obviously I have to trim it down so that all the edges are straight and stuff and I'm gonna cut down this decal on the side, unfortunately. And now we're gonna just add some glue. I don't know why I had a habit at this time of making everything so saturated with glue. I've made a lot of books since this video because of this class and I don't use this much glue anymore. So looking back, I'm like, oh my God. But I also think it's because it was such a heavy duty repair process that I really wanted to make sure everything stuck well. So I'm gluing the mole down to the spine. I'm using my finger to rub the glue around because sometimes it's just easier to use your finger because you can really feel where the glue is and where it's saturating the paper. And we're gonna glue the spine to this, of course. So it goes paper, mole, spine. And now we're gonna just glue the 
edges of the board to this. This is actually the easy part. I didn't film the difficult part, which was me taking the book apart, even though I already glued everything down and that was a task. So I'm leaving a lot of space for the gutters. Honestly, this book still came out the slightest bit tight. So I could have actually left even more space and Loki should have. The repair came out so much better than the before. So I will take it, but here it is. I'm flipping it upside down so I can obviously rub the paper really tightly against the glued part so that it sticks. At this point, I was really concerned about it not sticking or being lumpy. So working really hard to get everything where it should be. And then on the inside, we're gonna glue some more mold down. So this thing is double secured because as you can tell, I'm very paranoid about it ripping again because I am still using paper and normally I would use book cloth. So I cut a piece of mold to go here and I was like, that's too short. So I cut another one without measuring again. And I'm like, that's still too short. So then I cut a third piece and that one actually fit right. And I didn't want to do a whole strip as you can see on the inside because that would make it too bulky. So I did kind of horizontal strips instead and left some of the space. Of course, I had to reinforce the top and bottom edges because I want to make sure that, you know, nothing's going to move because that would really suck. And that's what I was trying to avoid. And getting things in the gutters is so important. Like I said, the gutters are the little spaces between the cardboard. You really want to get everything tight and flush in there because if not, it's going to be lumpy and it's going to fold weird and it's going to close weird and just cause you all kinds of problems. So the mold gets softer, the more you saturate it. And so I'm putting a lot of glue on here. My professor tells us not to put glue in the gutters because I don't really know why, but from the few times that I've made books and from right now when I'm making books, I always get glue in the gutters and arguably on purpose sometimes to make sure that everything sticks where I want it to stick. And it always works out fine for me. So I, I don't really know why we shouldn't do it. I'm sure she has a good reason. I just do not be following the rules, I'm sorry. She also told me not to take apart this book and I did it anyway, so no regrets, you know? Now we're gonna trim off the excess. This is how I like to trim off the excess. I don't like to measure completely beforehand because paper moves, so this is how I do it. And now we're gonna glue this down. Of course, we're gonna get this in the gutters as well and just really fold it across and obviously spread the glue out well so you don't get any lumps or bumps because that would be bad. And that's seriously one of the huge concerns I had for this because this cardboard has been ripped apart and taken apart even though it's been glued and all this stuff, it's been very, very complicated. So so surprisingly, despite only covering this with paper, my craftsmanship was good enough to fix all of the issues. So I'm pleased about that, but we're gonna just glue this down, use my bone folder and really just try to get it into these crevices. Another reason why I'm using a bunch of glue is to hopefully soften the paper so that I can manipulate it a bit better and really get it into these folds. And so I'm really shoving it in there and trying my best to get it to stretch just the slightest bit. And as you can see, it folds really well and I'm very pleased with it and I'm very happy with how it looks. Surprisingly, I like the green. Green hasn't really been my color, but suddenly this paper really gets to me, and I think it's the combination of the green on the strawberries. It just looks really cute, you know? So I'm gonna put some glue on this edge of my block of paper, and it's very lumpy, as you can tell, because I ripped it out of here, but I just glued it in there. I skipped that part because that was honestly really stressful for me, and I'm just weighing it down with these ceramic guys that I made in a video before. A lot of this process is just gluing things and weighing them down. But now we have these end sheets, which I'm going to use to cover this disgusting lumpiness I don't want anyone to see ever in my entire life. So you guys get a sneak peek of what's actually inside this beautiful book. Weird conglomeration of paper near the spine. So I'm putting way too much glue, but I'm using my finger to spread it out because you can just really feel where the paper needs more glue and where the paper doesn't. And sometimes you can't get that with a brush. So I like to do that sometimes when I'm doing paper to paper because it needs a little bit more of that extra help. So I'm going to glue these end sheets down. It just covers everything. I'm using Lukta paper, which is like a thicker paper and it's kind of fabric-y in nature. So it actually helped a lot with covering a lot of the secrets that I have because it was so thick. It just kind of like smoothed everything over. So I'm very pleased. Obviously when you're gluing things that are gonna be folded, you wanna fold things along the process to make sure everything fits well. Cause paper has a little bit of give, but also it moves when it folds. So you wanna make sure it accommodates for everything. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna glue this end sheet in and make sure it's aligned up properly. Properly. And then we pretty much just like fold the book, close it, make sure it fits crease it at the edge and there it is. I think it looks pretty good. With the very last part that I wanted to do, I wanted to paint some little stars because that's so cute. And the outside of the book has so much personality with the little strawberries. I felt like it was a little bit weird if the inside had absolutely nothing. So we're putting some stars in there because it's fitting, you know, you gotta do it. And so I'm using some gouache because the outside strawberries are painted with gouache as well and a dotting tool so I don't get any of those weird brush marks on the ends. And then I'm just gonna put some dots and that's pretty much the strawberry book finished. 
and I am so surprised that we were able to fix the entire thing successfully. First thing that I finished is this strawberry book. So I finally got fixing it. Like I said, the spine was like falling apart here and here and it was really annoying. I think I just like did the measurements wrong. And then of course I wrapped it in paper. So that really didn't help the situation, but I've now bounded it in this beautiful green color. I've been really into green lately and jade specifically, which I've been loving. And speaking of jade, I want to show you guys these new earrings that I got from Ana Luisa because they match my necklace today. And I just think they're so cute. This video is sponsored by Ana Luisa. So I wanna thank them again, as always. You guys know I'm an Ana Luisa ambassador. And so all of my earrings and most of my jewelry I get from Ana Luisa. And they sent me this beautiful pair of Lee green earrings. And I just think they're so cute and like festive for this Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year season. Also Valentine's Day is coming up. So if you guys wanna check them out, there will be a special Valentine's Day sale and you can always use my code as well. But I I am so excited because the Ana Luisa sales always go so crazy and they are honestly really good quality jewelry. I love their earrings. I'm really bad at remembering to take my earrings off when I should, so I never take them off in the shower or when I sleep. Every single pair of Ana Luisa earrings that I've ever worn has held up perfectly well against everything that I unfortunately put them through. They also sent me another pair of earrings. These are the Bonnie earrings. As you can see, it's just like a little line of jewels. I really wanted this specifically for my cartilage piercing because I thought it would be so so cute because it's like curved with the curvature of your ear and oh my god <gasps> I love Ana Luisa jewelry. Oh my god. They're also super sustainable. So I highly recommend it I noticed they changed their their packaging. Yep. They have different colors matches my fit low-key They had dark green reusable pouches that their jewelry came in for a while and now they're doing this color And they also sent me this heart necklace, which I think is super cute. We'll do a little influencer thing here But this has a toggle on it. I will be wearing this tomorrow with tomorrow's fit because it doesn't really go with my fit today. This is so cute for Valentine's Day. I love it. I also want to share with you guys their Ana Luisa gift sets, which are so, so cute and so perfect for Valentine's Day. If you're someone who is not good at picking out jewelry for your significant other on Valentine's Day, get yourself an Ana Luisa gift set because honestly, everything on there is so cute and I feel like everyone would like it. So not only do they have these gift sets, but they also have the 40% off deal right now. You would get a whole set of like earrings and a necklace and so pretty like they're so cute and this box is just so nice you don't even have to gift wrap just like if you guys want to check out Ana Luisa for their jewelry definitely definitely highly recommend them I love their stuff and thank you to them so much for sending me so many things this holiday season I highly appreciate it oh my god so yeah this is my little haul you will see me wearing these throughout this video and all of my future videos because as you guys know I be loving Ana Luisa they are the best so go check them out you can use my code as well for a discount and going back to the video the current state of the world right now the snow is getting worse and i believe the river is frozen solid we are in interesting times right now i don't know how this is going to pan out tomorrow but i was supposed to go to studio today actually and i decided not to because the snow was literally like blowing horizontally and i do not want to go i'm gonna try to go tomorrow hopefully i can but back to the book i'm i'm scattered right now because the snow outside is highly distracting let's get back to talking about the spine so you guys saw how i like redid it but i feel like it came out really well i painted the stars inside as well and i think that came out really really cute as you can see and then i had this sticky note in here originally as just like like a filler spot you guys saw it was on like the white sheets of paper i just had it there because i thought it matched the pink but i kept it in and i think it's really cute and like the colors all go really well except for the yellow but like this is a yellowy green so that's fine. And then here's the back. Really impressed with the flexibility of the spine, despite having so much stuff going on in it. It opens up almost flat and it probably could if I uh, wiggled it a bit more. But honestly, like, I don't really know what I'm going to use this for. Maybe I'll use this as a sketchbook. I feel very precious with like books I've made because I haven't made a lot of books, but I feel like once I make more, I will be more willing to use them. As you can see, like, look how pretty the edges are. Oh my God. I'm so proud of myself. My professor really didn't not want me to take this apart because it was like cracking a little bit and I was like I literally walked up to her and I was like um what should I do like this spine is broken and I don't like it and she was like oh you should leave it she was like you can just put a little glue in there and me with my with my Tiffany Wang brain, I was like, I can't just put glue in there. One, it won't keep it together. Two, this thing's not even opening right. And three, why don't I just take it apart? And so I asked her, I was like, should I just take this apart? She was like, no, 
do not take it apart. And I was like, okay, I won't. And then I came back and I did the unspeakable and I felt like Joe Goldberg from You. You know how he does the little like, the little things and he's like, with his little glasses, he's like, mm, I'm gonna remake these books. That's literally what I felt like. Very proud of how this came out. I think it's cute. So much better than before. Wasn't planning on doing this, but like honestly it looks so much better with it. It was like arguably too much strawberry before. I don't know if that's possible, but I feel like it is. And hooray. <laughs> so next item of order is going to be finishing the banana box that we've been working on. I started it in class. Um, so some of the footage I have is like from class randomly. So here's some footage that I snuck from class of us learning how to make the banana box. As you can see, the box is just a normal box. I'm just covering it in banana paper. That's why I keep calling it a banana box. We just pretty much wrap it like a glorified present in some book fabric, which is a little bit harder to work with than paper, but it worked out perfectly fine. And as you can see, I'm just doing the edges and then you gotta do the inside part, which I couldn't even finish in class, so I brought it back home that night and did it. And you can tell this was from a while ago from my nails, but I'm just gluing this stuff on there, getting it all nice and gluey and then i'm just gonna fold it inwards and this is pretty easy once you do the cutting part which is more complicated i did that off camera because i didn't think you guys would be interested but as you can see there's a bunch of scraps on the table and that's from me cutting tiny little slits in the corner because you want to give book fabric some space to move and so that's just how we do that you just kind of measure it accordingly to your box fold it in there and that's pretty much how you do it so i just spent some time gluing these flaps in place and that's all I did. It's actually a lot easier than it looks. You just have to get the measurements right. And I, for one, am really bad with measurements. So that is my worst fear is getting something wrong. But I'm bone folding it all down to make sure it's all nice and flat. And I'm just using my fingers to really press it down and make sure the glue is even. Using a brush makes the glue pretty even, but you still want to just make sure that it's nice and dispersed and you don't have any like bubbles or globs or anything weird because it will show through the outside. And then you can see like a weird lump. And I want a lumpless box ideally so that is what we're doing just folding it all down there i've got three out of the four sides down so we're almost there and so you want to do this inside box before you do the outside wrap part which is what we're finishing today because you want to go with your measurements off this finished box as compared to the like chipboard because if you do it off the finished box then you can also account for the thickness of the fabric so there's just a lot of stuff to account for with these projects but other than that Here's a banana box, so now we can make the wrap, and I'm pretty excited to be finishing this project because it looks so cute so far. So yay, we're gonna finish it today. I'm going to finish it now because like it's in pieces and shambles. I was supposed to finish this like a day ago and I haven't. She never checks our assignments after we finish, which I'm not complaining because I really appreciate being able to do things at my own pace, which is already arguably pretty fast compared to my classmates. So when I'm not finishing things, that definitely means there's like a lot of work that we've been given. I'm gonna go ahead and tackle this banana box. And I wasn't sure what paper I wanted. I was already very lucky that I found this green paper at the Ruthie store for this binding because I was actually really confused what color I wanted to use and I didn't even bring this book with me to the Ruthie store which is what I should have done. I should have taken it with me and then like paper up to it at the store to see like what I would like but I didn't do that but it turned out okay because I remembered these were like green foily colors. I'm just super lucky that it worked out to be honest but I really wanted a yellow color to match the yellow of the bananas as you can see but I just couldn't find one because like the Ruthie this store doesn't carry that much paper. I was already so lucky to find this obscure chartreuse color, which by the way, if four years ago you told me I was gonna be using chartreuse paper, I'd be like, never, never ever would I need that color because it's ugly. And now I've changed my ways. I found this paper, which is very pretty. Does it have a front or a back? No, it doesn't. It has, oh, I guess it does actually because all the gold pieces are on this side, but it has these little gold flecks in it and it's very pretty, but as you can see, it is like so sheer. I was thinking I could just layer it and then it makes like, you can't really tell that this is chartreuse anymore. Maybe you think that it's yellow and I think that would look nice inside the banana box or, 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 or I finally got around to picking up another pack of this. You guys know this infamous mini silver stars sheets that I use all the time. These are from the Rizzi store. I don't actually know where else to get them. So before I leave Rizzi, I'm gonna have to buy 16,000 packs of these. I was thinking, what if I put this inside the banana box? Because honestly, there is no color that I think is ideal 
because it is just like a kind of a complex design that I've come up with in terms of like wanting a specific interior. I don't really want any specific interior because I don't know. I think I set myself up for failure when I didn't pre-plan all of these materials. Like I didn't really plan what the paper was going to be to go together with this, but thankfully it all turned out okay. But for the banana box, I'm really struggling. Right now I have the outer cover and I have the banana box. And I think I'm gonna try the glitter. If it doesn't work, we're gonna do that paper combo. I guess I just have to try it and like see what happens because I don't really know. So it is time to officially finish our banana box. I am very excited. Like I said, we're gonna try this plastic stuff first and if it doesn't work, then we'll have to do something else. This is like a plastic sticker sheet. So it's actually very different from everything else we've been working with, which is fabric and paper. That's all very porous. This is literally plastic. So it also has no give. And I don't know why I decided to just stick it on without any filler paper in between. I thought it was okay until I realized it totally wasn't because I could feel the seam of where the fabric ends and the board begins, which I hate. So I ended up peeling it all off and restarting. And the reason I'm leaving the middle part empty is because I wanna make sure that the banana box has something to stick to. And because plastic is so non-porous, it's not gonna take any of the glue. And if I try to stick fabric to glue, it's just gonna come right off on the glue, you know? So I wanna make sure to leave some of that space to give it something to attach to. We're gonna slather this thing with glue so we can glue on some filler paper because obviously I want to make sure this is all even so I don't feel that seam. My professor made a really big point to not feel the seams of stuff and it really stuck with me because now I never probably would have noticed beforehand but now I notice it all the time. So I'm gonna cut this to size. It's just some printer paper because this fabric isn't that thick. I just need a little a something something so we're gonna put it in i do my measurements usually like this where i measure to the object instead of with numbers because i feel like with numbers it's never quite right so i'm going to cut this paper down to size and then we're going to do it again with this part and of course we're going to do it with the middle part as well so i'm just going through and making sure it's all level and this part is probably my least favorite part of making stuff because it's just like you don't even see it you know so something about it makes me feel like i know it's not useless because i know i need it it's just takes so much time to measure things like i said i don't like measuring so it's a pain i attached some things on the outside here as you can see i brought it on the inside to firmly attach it but this is one of the loops for the closures i didn't film me doing the closures because honestly it was so stressful and i didn't want to talk about it that's done so just just know that i did that and we're going to do this part as you can see i actually ripped paper off here because i forgot to do the closure so i ripped the paper off did the closure and now i'm putting more paper on to seal in that that closure and now all the filler paper is done so we can officially get to the good part which is using the plastic stuff I cut it to size. You always cut stuff to size. And I actually left a little piece of this plastic backing just so it doesn't stick to absolutely everything because this stuff is pretty sticky and it will peel off paper if it does that. As you can see, I put a layer of Lokta over the whole thing just to make it even smoother because you could feel where the closures were and stuff and I wasn't having it. So we did a third layer of paper. We're really just gonna crease this in and get it in the gutters because like I said, it's plastic. It has no give. So I really wanna make sure it fits. Also, my professor is very picky about the squeaking sound that boxes make when you don't do the gutters right you can hear like the crackling of paper when you open it and she doesn't like that and honestly i don't like it either so i'm trying very hard to make sure that it fits well i'm gonna cut off some of the excess here in the middle because like i said i need something for the banana box to stick to so we're just gonna take that right off and then we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side of the box just measuring it to size sticking it on cutting off the excess getting it in the gutters all that good stuff as you can see now i've learned i've put a little plastic piece behind where i'm not sticking stuff so that it doesn't stick to absolutely everything and that was a good move by me i don't know why i didn't think about that before but we're just gonna bone fold everything make sure it's super duper flat because i want my box to be flat and then we're gonna get it in the gutters and just really squish it in there and then we're going to finish off the last panel and i'm very excited that this is actually working out well i don't know why but i thought that this was probably most definitely not gonna work especially because it was plastic and i wasn't sure how the plastic was gonna hold up to being stuck to paper and then being folded and all that stuff but it behaved very well i don't have footage of me gluing in the banana box but just imagine that i glued it into that middle part it makes a lot of sense when you see it finished mm, update okay apparently the silver worked i'm so glad or it's not really silver it's like iridescent only downside this doesn't really work like the bone clasp it doesn't not work it just like doesn't want to stay in there one because i 
I put this a little bit too far. But another reason is just because it's like plastic with a bone. So obviously there's no friction to really hold it in. But it stays well enough. And for my first attempt, I think this is good enough. I can't really go about fixing this. As you guys know, I'm pretty obsessed with fixing things thoroughly. I couldn't do it with this one. And it's okay. Honestly, I'm okay with it because look how pretty. I just think it looks so good. I have some various items in here right now. I have a hand sanitizer and, and you know what actually fits in here? This guy. This guy fits in here and I'm going to continue to make more of these and put them in here. I actually need to make my very own box for this project, but for now it's residing in here. So after I make all my envelopes, they will sit in here until I can make a box for my own envelopes. I think it turned out pretty good considering this is the first box I ever made. Measurements are a little bit wonky. They're the measurements my professor gave me, so maybe I just did something wrong. Overall, very pleased with my two items. So I think instead of making the envelopes today, we will actually make them tomorrow because I I need to get some editing done for the rest of the day. In terms of snow day crafts, that is all I could get to today because it's already a lot. I will see you guys tomorrow for hopefully studio time. We will see if I can get into studio. If not, that will be very, very, very unfortunate. But I'm going to really, really hope. The snow is still really thick outside, so I don't know how it's gonna go. It literally looks like it's over 24 inches. They actually changed the forecast last night. It was supposed to be 24, and then they said it was gonna be 19. Now it looks like it's like 30, to be honest, so. We will see you tomorrow, so I will see you guys in the morrow, and let's wish me the best of luck because final season is impending and I need to go to studio. So I will see you guys then. Alrighty, good morning everyone. So I woke up so early this morning to go to studio. I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm zoning out because I'm so tired. I'm gonna just roll the clip, play the footage of me this morning at studio, doing my work, and then we will, we will come back here and reconvene. Alrighty everyone, oh my god, we're going to try to go outside and I've never seen snow like this before. This is literally right when I exit the building and you can't even see the ground because there's no ground anymore. It's all snow and there's a lot of it. So I was literally walking on snow and I was not expecting that. All our stuff is like buried in snow. And then, uh, believe it or not, I'm about to go down some stairs and you can't even tell that there's stairs anymore towards the bottom because there's so much snow. I'm not sure if anyone tried to shovel it this morning or if it's just stepped down from everyone being forced to go to studio because it's final season during winter session. But as you can see, these stairs, non-existent towards the bottom. I just kind of ran and <laughs> hoped I didn't fall. And there's just so much snow. This is a giant steep hill that I walk up and I'm trying to show you guys how steep it is. I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but I'm walking on literal snow. So I was really scared I was gonna slip and die. The snow is actually so pretty and it was actually very peaceful and it's glittery and I love it. I just wish it wasn't all up in my business, you know? These icicles that hang from the ceiling are kind of terrifying and um, I don't like walking under them because not only do they drip water, they could stab me. But as you can see, there's a giant mound of snow just like in front of our studio. So I'm like, what the heck? But guys, I am so excited to have my pink pulp. It is so, so pretty. And I also have blue and purple. And so we're finally gonna use this today and I have big plans for it. And by big plans, I mean minimal plans because you guys know I'm very confused when it comes to paper making. So we're just gonna put a couple scoops of this pink pulp into here. This is processed from me cutting up the fabric in my last video if you guys want to check that out but i pulled a couple sheets and they look beautiful oh my god they are so pretty and so i'm just squishing it down and i don't know why i'm not using a sponge i realized like a few days ago that i should definitely be using sponges to get the excess water but as you can see i did some that are mixed with white as well and i love them i absolutely love how these look and i did the purple ones as well which are super light purple like a very light lavender surprisingly and so those also did with some white and then we're going to to add our pulp balls from last time. I don't know if you guys remember the pulp balls, but this is just extra pulp I had from the last time I made paper and it has some confetti in it. And we're just gonna mix this in there because I don't wanna waste my pulp, obviously. And we were running really low on white pulp that day. So we're just making do with what we can. And so I'm adding some of the glitter as well, or the confetti, and we're going to just mix all of this stuff in. I have everything with me. And I pulled a sheet. It looks so pretty and beautiful. Oh my God. And I got the good molden decal this time. So as you can see, the edges are like 
super clean and I'm very happy about it. But here are all the sheets before I put a sheet on top and here are the sheets now. I wanted to make double-sided ones. So one side's gonna be pink, the other side's gonna be confetti. I did it with the purple one as well. And I just think it looks so cute. And they kind of look like Pop-Tarts, which is funny. I had this bolt ball as well I wanted to use up and this is the one with all the sakura petals in it. And you know, I thought I would like it, but I ended up not even liking the sheets of paper that I pulled with this. And also for some reason, the pulp turned completely pink by the time I finished dispersing it, probably because of all the red paper in it and the dyes just coming out, but I did not enjoy that. Here's the purple. You can barely tell it's purple. I'm adding some yellow stars to it and I'm adding yellow stars to blue as well, just so that we can get some little cute star paper, which I was very excited about. So here are the blue sheets I pulled and here are the blue sheets with the stars. They look very cute and I'm very happy with how these pulps turned out, honestly. And now we're gonna make some Valentine's Day paper because I have some hearts. So we're gonna mix this into the pink one and just pull a couple sheets from that. And so we are doing a bunch of vats at the same time. As you can see, I'm blending the pink and blue and this sheet specifically came out so good. Do you see how pretty that is? It's like the most beautiful gradient I've ever done. And we're also just doing some mixed with the white. So I've pressed these sheets already and now we're gonna just take them and put them on the blotters. This blotter is like very small, so it only fits five of them at a time. I'm just gonna peel off all of the different papers that we made today, which was a lot of them. We made a lot of sheets, but every time I make paper, I like to make as many as possible because I like to be efficient, you know, and I don't wanna come back to studio if I don't have to. So we're peeling the blotters off, getting the papers off, and then once these are done, they're going to go under a cinder block and be flattened for 24 hours and dried while I wait and do other stuff. But I actually broke the rules and I took these papers back with me before they were fully dry and that's okay. We don't tell anyone about that secret. But as you can see, here are the sheets after they're pressed. They look really good in my opinion, and I'm very happy with it. The only thing I wish was that this purple was a little bit darker. That's not really anything I can control necessarily. Also, here are the pulp balls from today. Beautiful. But it's not really anything I can control because it's just the color of the fabric. And so we walked back to our room, and as you can see, I had to actually walk in the snow at some point, and it was terrifying because the snow was so thick. And I threw a snowball off of the edge of our railing onto to the bridge because the river is frozen completely as you can see even though it's clear in some places it's literally frozen also rizzy had a cute hot chocolate bar and i got some hot chocolate but we are back now in our room and we're going to review the papers that we made that i stole while they were still wet so yes that was the work that i did in studio we finally made the paper i am so happy that my paper pulp is finished it took a little bit of time to process which is completely understandable because it's like very busy right now as you guys know everything in my past videos has been like oh i can't wait to do this but like i have to wait for this and this and like i can't wait to do this but i have to wait for this and this and so now i finally was able to make my pink purple and blue pulp i did my first batch because i'm not completely done with it we're gonna see what happens i'm really excited because i have my paper actually done behind me right now and I brought it back here. It's a little bit damp, but like it's fine. Also, finally gonna wear this Ana Luisa necklace. I've been thinking about it, okay? Cause this red necklace is so, so pretty. Ah. This is like so well made. So sorry, my hands are completely covering it. As you can see, there's the front, there's the back. Even the back looks good. I'm a sucker for a good toggle clasp at the front. I love the exposed toggle clasp. I don't know why. So if you guys wanna check out this necklace, it will be at Ana Luisa. Use my code. Very cute. I also have another one that goes like so well with it, which is insane. Anyway, back to the paper. Let me show you guys the fat stack of paper that we made. Oh my, what? So much paper. Some of this paper is the ones I've already made, but the ones that I made yesterday. So I have some different stacks here of different papers, but let's just start from the top. First that we have is this beautiful pink paper. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six sheets of these. And it's just like a really pretty pastel pink. I think they came out really, really cute. We're gonna start with the most plain ones and then work our way up. We have some purple sheets. As you can see, they look a bit white on camera, but let me show you a sheet that's actually white. This side is actually white, so you can see. It's a very light lavender, but it's very pretty. And then we got a bunch of blue sheets. And so I've already made blue sheets before because I made the denim color, but this is way prettier than the denim blue because it's just like a nice 
bright pastel blue. So I love that. And now I did some experimentation with stars. So here are the lavender ones with stars. I don't love these as much as I thought I would. I don't know. I feel like in my head, I was like, oh yeah, purple and yellow, perfect combo. It would be a perfect combo in theory, but I think the purple just wasn't dark enough to make this look super cute. It doesn't look bad though. Like I'm, I'm happy with it. So those are the purple ones with stars. We have some blue ones with stars. And I think these are much cuter. They reminded me of little twin stars or Cosmo and Wanda but obviously there's no blue one, but the purple ones really reminded me of Poof, which I thought was really funny. So we have the blue ones. These are very pretty. And then we had pink ones with hearts. And so these were like little Valentine's Day papers. I just thought it'd be really cute to have them. I don't know how I feel about them. I don't feel strongly or like not strongly about them. It's just pink paper with hearts. And then we have some double-sided ones. So this one's blue with the stars on one side and pink with the hearts on the other. I do like these ones a lot just cause I think they came out really, really cute. And then we have the blended ones as well. So these these ones are blue and pink blended together, my cotton candy paper, and some of the ombres are really, really pretty. I'm trying to find one that was blended really well. I think this one was done really nicely. So pretty, oh my God. So we're gonna make these into envelopes and stuff for sure, but those are the blended ones. You guys saw I did some with the leftover pulp balls. This is the Sakura one. The Sakura pulp ball ended up turning pink by the end of it. I'm not really sure what happened. I guess the red paper ended up like, the dye ended up leaking or something. This was supposed to be half pink and half white, but it just looks all pink, which is fine. And now moving on to my favorite ones, which are the ones that I did with the confetti mix. I love the funfetti paper still, obviously. It's my favorite mix. I think it looks so cute. I put hearts and stars into it this time. It had stars last time, but no hearts. And it just reminds me so much of the Powerpuff Girls. And I just think that's so, so cute. I did some of these ones where it's like one side is this and one side is the pink. And these are probably my favorite ones. So I want to make more of these. There was no more white Abaca left in the studio. So I couldn't make more of these. But I definitely want to. And then we did some with the purple as well, which I thought was very pretty. We have some that are half purple, half abaca. I don't know if you guys remember me saying, but like I wanted to make the white paper thicker and this was a very good solution. We also just have some general blends. These are the pink with white little ombres. But yeah, that's all the paper that we made in studio. Hopefully we can make some more. Some of them are still in the drying rack, so I will show you guys those when they're done. But here they all are, lots of paper that we made. And so that is pretty much everything we have done today. We did a lot of stuff. Not only did we do all of this, but we also have a box that's full of envelopes in here. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching, for hanging out with me on this snow day. It would've been much more boring if I was snowed in without you guys. So I wanna thank you guys all for watching and hanging out with me. Let me know. What what you guys think about everything that I've made. Some of this stuff is super new to me, like making this box and the paper. I've been experimenting with paper for the past three weeks, but like still pretty new at it. But let me know what you guys think, any tips on any of this stuff as always. And thank you guys so much for watching, for hanging out with me. I really, really appreciate it. Hopefully the snow melts soon and I can get around more, but as of right now, way too, way too steep to be getting anywhere. As you can see, the one time I had to actually walk in the snow. Also, this is future me from the future. Check out Anna Luisa for their Valentine's stay sale because it's super cool. Bye. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay hydrated, take a nap. I will see you when I see you. Thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.